Good evening, welcome to the Daily Office, and thanks for joining me. This is Night Prayer for Saturday, October 13. It's the 20th week after Pentecost in week 7 in the Psalm Cycle. The scripture for this service, Psalm 137, Acts 25, verse 13 to 27. And join me now in singing verse 6 of Psalm 95 to the tune of St. Columba. All praise to you, eternal God, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, Holy Spirit, three in one, our light and our salvation. Our help is in the name of God Most High, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Together. O merciful God, we have sinned through our own fault, in our thoughts and words and deeds, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We beseech you, overlook our faults, Cast our sins behind your back, that we may serve you and praise you all the days of our lives. Amen. And may Almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, by the rivers of Babylon we sat down, and there we wept as we remembered Zion. Alleluia. Psalm 137, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, by the rivers of Babylon we sat down, and there we wept as we remembered Zion and we hung our harps upon the willows there. For it was there that our captors told us to sing a song. They that oppressed us required of us joy, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing God's songs in a strange land? If I should forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I do not prefer Jerusalem above all my joys. Remember, O God, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Tear it down, tear it down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy are they that reward you as you deserve. Happy are they that take and dash your little ones against the stones. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. By the rivers of Babylon we sat down, and there we wept as we remembered Zion. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 25, beginning at verse 13. After several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face, and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem 
and be tried there on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you will hear him. And so on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp, and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then Festus gave the order and Paul was brought in, and Festus said, King Agrippa and all here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish community petitioned me, both in Jerusalem and in here, shouting that he ought not live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death. And when he appealed to his imperial majesty, I decided to send him. But I have nothing definite to write to our sovereign about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner without indicating the charges against him. Here ends the lesson. And now, in the words our Savior taught us, we're bold to say, Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. O oh God, we are desolate apart from you, for it is only in you that we find our joy. Make haste to visit us and bring your dominion to all the world and its peoples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.